Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today we are bringing a new topic to you which is, stages of research process. There are a variety of approaches to research in any field of investigation, irrespective of whether it is applied research or basic research. Each particular research study will be unique in some ways because of the particular time, setting, environment, and place in which it is being undertaken. All research endeavors share a common goal of furthering our understanding of the problem and thus all traverse through certain basic stages, forming a process called the research process. An understanding of the research process is necessary to effectively carry out research and sequencing of the stages inherent in the process. These eight stages in the research process are 1. Identifying the problem 2. Reviewing literature 3. Setting research questions, objectives, and hypotheses. 4. Choosing the study design. 5. Deciding on the sample design. 6. Collecting data. 7. Processing and analyzing data. 8. Writing the report. The research process outlined above is, in essence, part and parcel of a research proposal. It is an outline of your commitment that you intend to follow in executing a research study. A close examination of the above stages reveals that each of these stages, by and large, is dependent upon the others. There is seldom any single strategy or formula for developing a successful research study, but it is important to realize that the research process is cyclical and iterative. Let's look at these eight stages one by one. Step 1. Identifying the problem the first and foremost task in the entire process of scientific research is to identify a research problem. A well-identified problem will lead the researcher to accomplish all important phases of the research process, starting from setting objectives to the selection of the research methodology. Intuitively, researchable problems are those who have a possibility of thorough verification investigation, which can be effected through the analysis and collection of data, while the non-research problems do not need to go through these processes. Researcher need to identify both 1. Non-research problem, and 2. Research problem. A non-research problem is one that does not require any research to arrive at a solution. Intuitively, a non-researchable problem consists of vague details and cannot be resolved through research. It is a managerial or built-in problem that may be solved at the administrative or management level. The answer to any question raised in a non-research setting is almost always obvious. Research problem in contrast to a non-research problem, a research problem is of primary concern to a researcher. A research problem is a perceived difficulty, a feeling of discomfort, or a discrepancy between the common belief and reality. Step 2. Reviewing of literature. A review of relevant literature is an integral part of the research process. It enables the researcher to formulate his problem in terms of the specific aspects of the general area of his interest that has not been so far researched. Such a review, not only provides him exposure to a larger body of knowledge but also equips him with enhanced knowledge to efficiently follow the research process. Through a proper review of the literature, the researcher may develop the coherence between the results of his study and those of the others. We enumerate the following arguments in favor of reviewing the literature. It avoids duplication of the work that has been done in the recent past. It helps the researcher to find out what others have learned and reported on the problem. It helps the researcher to become familiar with the types of methodology followed by others. It helps the researcher to understand what concepts and theories are relevant to his area of investigation. Step 3. Setting research questions, objectives, and hypotheses, after discovering and defining the research problem, researchers should make a formal statement of the problem leading to research objectives. An objective will precisely say what should be researched, to delineate the type of information that should be collected, and provide a framework for the scope of the study. The best expression of a research objective is a well-formulated, testable research hypothesis. A hypothesis is an unproven statement or proposition that can be refuted or supported by empirical data. Hypothetical statements assert a possible answer to a research question. Step 4. Choosing the study design. The research design is the blueprint or framework for fulfilling objectives and answering research questions. 
It is a master plan specifying the methods and procedures for collecting, processing, and analyzing the collected data. There are four basic research designs that a researcher can use to conduct his or her study. 1. Survey. 2. Experiment. 3. Secondary data study and 4. Observational study. The type of research design to be chosen from among the above four designs depends primarily on four factors. The type of problem. The objectives of the study. The existing state of knowledge about the problem that is being studied. And the resources are available for the study. Step 5. Deciding on the sample design. Sampling is an important and separate step in the research process. The basic idea of sampling is that it involves any procedure that uses a relatively small number of items or portions, called a sample, of a universe, called population, to conclude the whole population. It contrasts with the process of complete enumeration, in which every member of the population is included. Such a complete enumeration is referred to as census. A population is the total collection of elements about which we wish to make some inference or generalization. A sample is a part of the population, carefully selected to represent that population. If certain statistical procedures are followed in selecting the sample, it should have the same characteristics as the population as a whole. These procedures are embedded in the sample design. Sample design refers to the methods to be followed in selecting a sample from the population and the estimating technique, vis a vis formula for computing the sample statistics. Step 6. Collecting data. The gathering of data may range from simple observation to a large scale survey in any defined population. There are many ways to collect data. The approach selected depends on the objectives of the study, the research design, and the availability of time, money, and personnel. With the variation in the type of data, qualitative or quantitative, to be collected, the method of data collection also varies. The most common means for collecting quantitative data is the structured interview. Step 7. Processing and analyzing data. Data processing generally begins with the editing and coding of data. Data are edited to ensure consistency across respondents and to locate omissions, if any. In survey data, Editing reduces errors in the recording, improves legibility, and clarifies unclear and inappropriate responses. In addition to editing, the data also need coding. Because it is impractical to place raw data into a report, alphanumeric codes are used to reduce the responses to a more manageable form for storage and future processing. This coding process facilitates processing the data. The personal computer offers an excellent opportunity in data editing and coding processes. Data analysis usually involves reducing accumulated data to a manageable size, developing summaries, searching for patterns, and applying statistical techniques for understanding and interpreting the findings in the light of the research questions. Step 8. Writing the report. The entire task of a research study is accumulated in a document called a proposal. A research proposal is a work plan, prospectus, outline, an offer, a statement of intent or commitment from an individual researcher or an organization to produce a product or render a service to a potential client or sponsor. The proposal will be prepared to keep in view the sequence presented in the research process. The proposal tells us what, how, where, and to whom it will be done. It must also show the benefit of doing it. It always includes an explanation of the purpose of the study, the research objectives, or a definition of the problem. It systematically outlines the particular research methodology and details the procedures that will be utilized at each stage of the research process. The end goal of a scientific study is to interpret the results and draw conclusions. A report is an excellent means that helps to establish the researcher's credibility. At a bare minimum, a research report should contain sections on an executive summary, background of the problem, literature review, methodology, findings, discussion, conclusions and recommendations. We hope this video was an informative one for you all. If you wish to know more about PhD related topics, then stay tuned to Research Graduate. You can even contact us or visit our website to know about the services we provide. 
Thanks a lot.